stop, stop And take a trip down on my block on. Where you see hidden potential Young minds sharper than pencil like And ain't afraid to speak their mind If they got something against you nope. We standing with you We tackle issues like civic pride Hate will cease to exist Let's put our differences aside From my side to your side From Dutch Town to South Side From Penrose to North Side From Benton Park to Old North know. The West End the West Side We blessed when we step out We stand down, rise up Stand together, wise up This is Stitch Cast Studio Produced by St. Louis Story Stitchers In St. Louis, Missouri This is Stitch Cast Studio Live In our latest episode We talk about how misunderstanding Certain groups of people can lead to fear With our special guest, Dr. Chef Mrs. Mama Cat Daniels CEO of Pie Bangers Feed the Body Mission Check it out They say who that But you already knew that That be them Story Stitchers Story Stitchers Story Stitchers Story Stitchers Story Stitchers Hello, hello. Once again, everybody under the sound of my voice, I want to thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Stitch Cast Studio. I'm your host, Brandon, and I am accompanied by a few members of our Stitch Cast. Uh, if, you've, if you're a listener of Stitch Cast Studio, then you may know that we've started a series where we dive into how misunderstanding a group of people can lead to you subconsciously fearing a group of people, which could lead to you hating that group of people so uh me and the other podcasters we came up with a with a long list of groups of people that we believe are misunderstood and because of that unfairly hated and uh one of those groups of people we believe are actually homeless people if you if you if you if you if you you pretend that you don't see homeless people or if you've ever kind of looked down on homeless people then 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 you've experienced exactly what i'm talking about now that being said we have a special lady with us and and I want to make sure I do her justice. So I'm actually going to let her introduce herself. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mama Cat. Hey, 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 what's up? What's How good? How you feeling? Thank you oh, so much for coming through. Oh, I'm outstantabulous. You know what I'm saying? I heard, heard. Whoa, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Slow down. Yeah. Outstantabulous. I like Shady. that. Hey, 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 you heard? You heard? In the building. Uh, yes, Thanks ma'am. for the uh, Having me here with you all. Of course, all. of course. Like, you know, I'm feeling special right now. Yes, you should. Love yes, is ma'am. real. So, you should, so much, you should, you yeah. should be. You're, do- you're doing a lot. You're oh. doing a lot to help homeless people. And I'm not going to tell, uh, the reason I wanted you to introduce yourself is because I don't, I don't even want to, I can't tell your story how you can tell your story. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I feel like that that's the best way for it to be told by you telling it. So, uh, you, you, you do a lot for homeless people. You have a, a, a truly amazing story and you've bounced back from a lot. And so, so we're going to talk about a little bit of all of that. So, uh, uh, for starters, can we, st- can we start with a little bit of, uh, who you are and how you became who you are? Mm. Well, I think I came, became who I am by God's grace. I got to say that first. Amen. I'm yes, Dr. Ma'am. Chef Mrs. Mama Cat Daniel. Yeah, you heard. Um, so you heard. I'm not, I'm, I got paperwork on all those titles, so hey, I'm gonna yeah. utilize them <laughs> yeah. all, right? Yes, um, ma'am. But um, I'm the founder and CEO of Pop Bangers Feed the Body Mission. We serve our unhoused and underserved communities in St. Louis and Metro East. Um, so wherever we need to go, and I have one in other states. So wherever we need to go and and take care of our people, that's what we're supposed to do. Yes, we ma'am. must love and support each other. So I live by that. Absolutely. You know, so, um, you know, I'm born in Harlem, raised up in the Bronx. I moved here in 2012 from San Diego, California. I'm a Navy wife, retired. Mm. I'm a Navy mom and a Navy grandma. And I worked for the Navy for 22 years. So, Whew. you know, I um, served our country. Yes. So how, I'm, how many lives have you lived? Man, yeah. you, My you, listen, listen, God put you where you're supposed to be in the moment you're supposed to be there. Say so sometimes you're going to have your trials and then you're going to have your triumphs. Yes. And, uh, you know, and so I'm thankful for all of it. You know, if you don't go through the trials, you don't get to really appreciate the triumphs in life. So, yes, ma'am. You know, I learned learned a lot of lessons, and I'm still learning. I'm in chapter sixty, and I'm still learning. We keep learning, as long yes, as we ma'am. on this earth, we learn. Yes, ma'am. As we so, yes, ma'am. Where uh, where does your uh passion for helping homeless people come from? Um, I you know I come from a family. I'm number ten of eleven kids, raised up in the South Bronx. Um, my parents worked every day. And we still struggled, but I didn't know it because they didn't let us know, you know. So I had a, a really happy childhood growing up. 
as an adult when I moved to the West Coast situations happened. And I was a mother of three and I was divorced and um, I worked every day, but we still found ourselves unhoused on the streets of San Diego. Um, people kind of look at you away. You know, I didn't try to get there. I went to work every day. I took care of my babies every day. Never saw a diamond child support, so that didn't help my situation. But we went through it. My children are strong, strong men and women. Um, and, um, and we got through that moment. You know, so um, that's where my passion comes from, I think, is that I had to go through it myself to understand what it was. Right? Understood. So, been there, done that. I don't want them T-shirts. They ain't about me. Heard that. But I promise I'm going um, to open the floor for everybody to ask questions. But real quick, since you've touched on being unhoused, uh, one of the things that I that I, re- I think is very important that we touch on what what did what did it take to bounce back from that? How 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 did how did you bounce back from that? Um, in my situation, I had a real good friend, real good friend, and she was like, "Cat," she said, "My aunt and uncle own apartment, you know, complexes. They owned a lot of property. Uh, Floyd Robinson used to play for the San Diego Padres. Him and his wife Sandra, they own some places. And Deborah, Beautiful. who is their niece and a friend of mine." Um, she was able to help me get into a place. I didn't have money for first, last security deposit. deposit. So, uh, you know, I was able to pay my rent and they let me pay down the deposit. They killed the last of my rent. And that's how we were able to get started. I mean, I did wasn't like I didn't have nothing. I went to work every day. Right, yeah. You know, I just didn't have a lot, you know, so... It was, um, and I had an eviction on my record as well, so that wasn't helpful either. Right, right. You know, so that was back in 1989. Mm. You know, so uh, long way. Right. Praise God. Absolutely. Uh, Obviously, Mm -hmm. I have more questions to ask, but I want to open the floor for uh, anybody else that uh, wants to ask questions. Yeah, I was going to say one of my questions would be, what's the hardest part of trying, you know, being a mother trying to raise your kids and still, you know, and then during that process, what did it take for you to go to work every day and still try to provide for your children while being out of a home? Um, the blessing was that I did have friends who would keep my kids so that I can go to work. Um, you know, sometimes they let me stay at their house. Sometimes I was able to make enough tips to get a hotel room. You know, it was rough. Um, but it's not as bad as a lot of people had it. And I lived in a warm climate, so that was helpful too. So there was nights where we slept in our vehicle and sat out there by the water, and my kids slept good in the back of that station wagon, you know. So, I mean, it was it was seven months. It wasn't easy, but it wasn't as bad as I've seen some of my brothers and sisters. Were there any... Uh for lack of a better word, assumptions that you had about uh, homeless people before you had to experience it yourself? Not really, but yes. Um, So my mom and dad was like the neighborhood parents. And a lot of people, you know, back in the day, the exodus went from the south to the north. So my parents come out of South Carolina. A lot of people would come, I remember growing up in the 60s and 70s, and people coming from the south up north. And they were, some of them ended up on the streets in New York. My mother and father would take people in. You know, they always fed somebody. My mother would cook and feed the whole community. You know, I didn't know um, what people really went through. I remember going to high school, and my high school was down in Midtown Manhattan. And you see people on the streets, um, and then they moved to Lower Manhattan, down to Houston Street. And I wasn't that far from the Bowery. And that's where a lot of unhoused people was. And, you know, I I lived with every day as a kid, not knowing any better, and saying, look at them bums. That's the worst thing you can say to somebody, because you you don't know what brought people to that point. See, homelessness is is the middle of a lot of intersections. It comes from a di- lot of different directions. It's many things that bring people to that one point. And so, um, you know, you got to think about, hey, where they come from? 
who they family. Do they have mental health issues? Do they have addiction issues? Um, domestic violence? It's a lot of things that put people on the street. And just for me, it's my, my apartment getting flooded. And I was out there with kids. Your uh, stint of being unhoused, was this before or after your military time? That was before, years before I met my husband and before I went to work for the military. Um, yeah, that was years. I mean, I was working like sometimes five days and seven nights. Mm. And I was, <laughs> you, you talk about my many lives. Right. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> right, right. I, I worked, I worked, uh, and sometimes, you know, I just was spinning because I was going so much, you know, but had kids that had to eat. Exactly. And I wasn't going to do anything that my daughter couldn't be proud of. Had a daughter. Never was going to do so. If I'm not making as much money as the next one, then I guess I need to go get another job. And I think I need to go pull some overtime. You know, that was my thought. And I thank God because my daughter just retired in September from doing 22 years in the Navy. So wow. I think I did all right with her. <laughs> so, Definitely. You know, Definitely. Definitely. Uh, what are your, uh, you have three kids, right? I gave birth to three, ended up with six. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, is, is, is everybody in the military? No, uh, my two oldest. My two oldest, uh, my daughter stayed the 22 years, my oldest baby. My second oldest baby, uh, he stayed 10. So he's working on his PhD right now, and he's doing all right here in D.C. And so she's in Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be joining her soon. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So as someone who's lived both lives, when you see unhoused veterans, do, do, does it, does it, does it, does it, does it feel? Does it? Does it? Does it feel different? Like, do you? Do you? Do you start to think of where things might have went wrong? How, how do you? How do you feel when you see that? Well, um, number one, a veteran should never be unhoused. I agree. 100%. But this is a fact, and that's part of why I'm going to Jacksonville. To work with my unhoused brothers and sisters that served this country. Um, but I don't think that, see, I had a grandson who also served. And while he was in, he was diagnosed after he got out with the mental illness, but they didn't even try to find out what was going on with him. And so he lost all his benefits. He lost, got like the worst cold ever. They just threw him out of the military and he was on the house. He was not going to be on the street because he, you know, his illness didn't let him stay in one place long. So he was bouncing around, but somebody was gonna always open their door because it's we weird family. But the thing of it is, is that now he's he's okay because they didn't know who his mama was. Mama went to work. Like, um, yeah, this instruction say this. So my grandson is getting all his benefits now. But he was one of those veterans that got thrown on the side and there's a lot like him who don't have advocacy. Where is I agree with you 100. percent I don't I don't see how someone who 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 served the country in the in the way that the military does could could ever end up homeless. How how do, how do we fail to take care of those people? So 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 where do you, where do you think the disconnect is? What how are these people slipping through cracks? You know that's the sixty four thousand dollar question because there's no way they should slip through the cracks. But sometimes you have individuals so sometimes put themselves in a position, I feel, so this is my thought, that want to play God with, uh, with people's lives. And they don't think about how their decision affect the next person's life. Or you have people who, you know, years ago, back in the 80s, I know a friend, who ended up abusing substances, right? They needed to go to a treatment. Don't just throw them out there. You know, if you're going to discharge them, okay, fine. Well, make sure they get the help that they need on the way out the door. So that, you know, that's a real huge problem. I'm about to, yeah, jump in the middle of all that. I feel you. I feel you. Look, look at all these fronts that you're fighting battles on, and you're about to go hop into another one. That's wild. And I think, I think we need people like that. We definitely need people like that. Um, what it, what do you what would it take do you think for uh 
for or, or if 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 you were in charge, if if you if you if you if you had a high branch in the government, what 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 do you think it would take to ensure that uh people that serve this country didn't have to experience homelessness and and, and all of the other things that they uh, unfortunately have to experience, uh like 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 um uh, uh sexual assault and uh these other things that 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 people that just, nobody should have to go through, but 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 if anybody didn't go through it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be them. So what what do you think? What do you, what we need to do? Man, what would I do if I had the juice? That's what you're asking? Yes, ma'am. Well, what would I do? I would create a whole branch that would address the needs of our veterans who have laid it down when nobody else did. Right? We got people... Let's get them the help that they need. Let's get them programmed. They have programs out here, but I don't think that these programs are being aggressive enough in attacking what is ailing these soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. You see what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. These service members deserve more, I feel like, than what they're getting. So I would, I would uh, bring people on board who live that life. I don't want somebody... Just because you got a degree. No, I want people who have a lived experience. Right. Because I think that's where you'll understand, you know, what somebody's going through. Well, education don't hurt, but that's not the end all be all. Definitely. They, I, I, I think that they need to bring their whole heart. Right? That's a requirement coming up in my pot bangers kitchen. You got to bring your heart. I ain't giving nobody a dime. I don't have a dime. Mm. <laughs> and that's my word. But you come up in there, you come with the love, right? It's a revolution now. Um, for any youth that's listening that's homeless or that's, that know of other youth that's homeless, like what would you say the first step should be to getting on track? To getting them on track? Uh, right. I probably would go and just hug them up first. <laughs> no, right. I mean, uh, that's just me. But no, really, um, if... You got young people. There are agencies, you know, like Covenant House and different um, shelters and things that address homelessness and youth. So there is um, a guide, if you will, that they can uh, uh, go through the city to find, you know, or the county. But if someone was brought to me, I'm going to go and reach into my resources hey, look, I have a young person here that don't have anywhere to go. Okay, so what's my next direction? I do it all the time. And I talked to Yusuf Scoggin, who's now the director of human services for the city. But I worked with him for years out there in the county. And he does amazing work in getting people where they need to go. And it's about, you know, just being willing to be that resource sometimes. You know, be that bridge over the waters that's troubled, right? That's all the time. Love and support. Uh, what was your, what was your, when, when you, when you started Pot Bangers, what, what, do you remember what your first meal was that you cooked? Well, the history of Pot Bangers, though, you know, started on the streets of Ferguson. Oh, yes, During the yes, uprising. Yes. Um, so I remember what it was exactly because, um, when Michael Brown was killed, you know, I watched on TV and I was horrified. And I'm a mother and I have sons, I have grandsons. And a few months after he was killed, my first great grandson was born. And so I needed to get out there and, and check on these babies that's out there on these streets, but I need to go out there and raise my, my fist too. Um, I went out there, and I was out there uh, the second day after it happened. And I didn't know what to do. I'm just here, like, what do I do? And I met a group of young folks. It was 10 of them, and I loved them all dearly. Um, they are known as the Lost Voices now. But they were just a group of young people out there. And I'm like, what y'all doing? They said, well, we ain't going home till we get justice for Mike Brown. I said, right on. <laughs> so what can I do? And... I was still in school at the time. Um, I went back to school and got my culinary degree at that time. And so he said a little home-cooked meal won't hurt nothing. He right. didn't know who he was talking to. Food <laughs> speak all the languages for me. Right, so I right. tell him, I say, well, you know, I'll be back tomorrow. Came back with spaghetti and salad and garlic bread. 
And see, I could have just dropped the food off and kept it moving. But I sat down with these young people and I broke bread with them. And every day I went to school, got out of school, put food on, did my homework with my grandson, and we came out and we brought dinner. And then after we ate, we would march up and down West Florida. That's, mm. that's how it got started. Wow. So um, it just it just progressed because I didn't know St. Louis. I'd only been here two years. Mm. And so, you know, going to school, going out on the street, and a young man named uh, Antonio Martin was killed in Berkeley. And so, you know, a bunch of us activists stepped up um, to support this family, help with funeral expenses. But a revolutionary act from a mother to a mother is to really serve that mother. And so how can I serve best? I'm going to bang some pots. My mom was the OG pot banger, right? So, you know, I be trying to do what she do. <laughs> I don't know if I can ever do that, but be trying to do what she do. But we cooked and we served a repast. And then we found that we had extra food. I didn't know where the unhoused community was at in St. Louis. But somebody told me, and so, um, from 2014, we've been building relationships with our family out there, you know? Yes. First thing you do when you go out there, you got to recognize people's humanity uh -huh. and understand that everybody is deserving of love. Yes. And so, yeah, that's that's where we kicked it off and, and punching sense. So, so I can't help but assume that your mother cooked crazy, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom Duke put it down, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so. Yeah. If you, if you had to, if you had to pick one, what would be the meal that 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 stick out that your mother made you? Well, I'm gonna start with my favorite cake that she made. Okay. It was this pineapple coconut cake. Mm -hmm. Everything. Like, I'm tasting it right now. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Having it sounds vision. good. It sounds um, good. Yes, yes. She inspired me. To cook, you know, a uh, smothered steak mm. over rice with some string beans. <laughs> I mean, mm. I like I like the simple thing. I heard you. you know, when the holidays come, my mother would clown. Mm. She would clown. But her carrot cake is banging too. Yeah, carrot cake. God bless her soul. But yeah, it was just like so many things, right? But then I had not just my mom's. I had aunts, my older sisters, aunties, my brothers. <laughs> Listen, on they, the, they, the. they, on the whole another level, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I was impressed. Like, my aunt Lorraine, she did wedding cakes. Oh, she, yeah. That's where I started with, with decorating cakes, right? So I design cakes. I make pianos and all kinds of stuff. Right? Yeah, I, I be caking. Hey, Brandon, Just man. underscore cake in Excel. <laughs> Check me out, because I, I do cakes. But yeah, so like food is an art form. Most of it, it is. absolutely. In, it is. You know when the, um, the Central Library downtown, when they did the grand reopening, mm -hmm. and they had bakers from all over St. Louis, right? I was in school. I was a student, but my cake was in there with them. Hey, I was uh, like, boom, shakalaka. Okay. On me, right? Yeah. Stop playing. I know? did Game of Thrones. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to show y'all a picture. It was please. lit. It was lit. All right, yeah, so. look. Yeah, give yourself a cut on the back. Deserve. Absolutely. Most definitely deserve. Absolutely. Most definitely yeah, deserve. Yeah, it was, it was fun doing. I love doing cakes. So. Yeah. That's dope. It's, uh, and, oh, before we even move on, I just got to say this for anybody that may be listening, because uh, I grew up with a family that can throw down, too. So if you if you if you if you if you blessed or fortunate enough to live in a family where where, where you got just some good cooks and people that's willing to come together and enjoy each yeah. other company and, and just throw yes. down and cook together and you know like you you gotta like like just take a second to understand how blessed and how and how and how, how how much of a privilege that is because everybody yeah. don't have that and I didn't even know that until like I got older uh uh, uh that's when I realized that not, first of all not not everybody family can cook. Sorry. Man. Sorry. You're not lying. Man. Really You're not lying. I mean, right. yeah, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And that's not even like a insult. You know what I'm saying? Some no, no, people, shame, some people no aren't shame. even like yeah. some families don't even coexist well enough together to, yeah. to come together and eat good and all of that. So if you have that, 
understand how fortunate you are and also understand that you got some friends that might not have that so invite them to the cookout or something man yeah man. Stop yeah. Yeah, I actually right. I actually oh, have some friends of my own who was like you know bro they they see they looking from the outside in and it's like you know they had that so I was like bro I got it so why not you know right most, most of right slide mm-hmm. through slide through most of yeah, yeah. 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 open, open it up open them doors yeah. you yeah. know on Thursday nights we mm-hmm. be getting down like that yeah, we got you enough know? We got enough for the whole because block. Everybody that come in that kitchen, no people just be dropping in to volunteer because they know they're getting a meal at the end of it. <laughs> you know, we yeah. pack up the food to go out on the street. And I'll take some but place home. We, no, we sit down and break bread, bro. Oh, yeah. Hey, you uh, sit down. Because, see, uh, I want to know what's going on in your life, what's going on in your world. You know, what you yeah. what you need to talk about. Like, what I need to talk about, right? Yeah, yeah. They so try, we they sitting down. They tell their story with some... Yeah, we we got a big room. We can socially distance up in there and 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 get down. But we always break bread before the crew go out on the streets and serve our unhoused family. We sit down last night. We had I made some split pea soup yesterday. Word, no, yeah, split pea. I, I ain't never heard nothing like that. I ain't never even heard nothing like that. It was like kind of brisk outside last night, so you Monta. gotta. That's when you start putting them soups up in them, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a split pea, right? And then I take some some um, smoked turkey tails Ooh. and some and some turkey legs, you know? and I took you know Ooh. cooked it down, took the meat off, chopped it up, yeah. put that meat back up in there, cooked it all down together, and then I made some rice, and you just listen. Yo, man, I he, just didn't have time to do the cornbread, but yo, thank that's, yo. Yeah, that's a real cook right there. Yo, I'm so that's glad it's right almost there. Thanksgiving. I can't even, I can't even front with you. At the oh, time, yeah, at Matt. the time that we recording this right now is, uh, we're, we're about a week or two away from Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, by the time this weeks. come out, we'll probably be after Thanksgiving. But man, imagine. Yo, man. imagine, man. I'm, I'm, man, all these food talk got me hungry right now. I'm saying, yeah, you know, all this food talk. Now, now I'm curious about something. Uh, Anna, you vegan, right? No. Why are you not vegan? Mm-mm. Why are you you just eat like vegan ish stuff? I'm a uh, flexitarian. Flexitarian. Yeah. Okay. I, I ain't never heard of that one. So, so it's like, like. So like I eat like healthy throughout the week and then on weekends I go crazy, but I don't eat pork. Yo, I'm I'm I one of those. I didn't even no know pig. it. No. I'm one of those and I ain't even know it. You're I'm a flexitarian fight. too. Wow. Hey, yo, You're I'm flexitarian. saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm wow. saying, hey, we flip we flexitarian. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and, and so every week. When I when I do um, my menu mm. on what's going to be served, like we go anywhere from like 100 meals to 200 meals. Mm. Um, and so I have to decide, you know, what we're going to make. And it has to be something that can serve a lot of people, but right. it has to meet all the food groups. Like it right. has to, you know, have our starch and, and our uh, vegetable. I always prefer green vegetable. Right, uh, my protein, and sometimes I remember I made some. It was a vegan chicken. It was a spaghetti. People thought they had some real chicken, but I'm, I'm cool with that right. because it was a great protein. It was delicious, and everybody ate well. You know, um, I think that our family on the street don't get good nutrition, so we gotta be responsible yeah. for Good making sure we Good do it. Up. And so, in addition to the meal, we have a bag. In the bag have fresh fruit. It got chips. It got cookies, and they have our napkins and utensils that go with each meal. You get a bag. Um, they got their little junk food for later on. You know they're gonna right. have their fruits. It, right. You know we try to make sure that they they eat well. Definitely. Yeah. And you and you'd be surprised. Uh, well, not you. You wouldn't be surprised, but uh, people that haven't experienced or or seen something like being un- un- unhoused up close, you'd be surprised how much the simple things matter. You know the, the, thing, the things that most of us just take for granted every single day. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you'd be surprised how, how, how much a hot plate could mean to somebody Man, that, ain't, that ain't got to eat something like that in a while. You know, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't do that. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why a couple years ago I decided, you know, it, it was like right after church. And I just remember they was passing out these bags and it was like, you know, I had all these little meanings in them and so i was like after that i was like mom i was like can we go to the store you know just bought 100 lunchables and 100 waters and stuff and just went downtown and just start passing them out so most dev yeah just start passing them out you know yeah I've and done just, stuff a, like that just too. the smiles on their faces because you know you know especially it's coming from youth so the smiles on mm-hmm. their faces just to see that it was different hey everybody you know what time it is it's time for our pick the city up art interlude 
featuring an original piece by Story Stitch's artist collective called Wade. Check it out. Far from lost on me. Our undertones with tensions high. You hear them audibly, they hear, but shouldn't be no more. Stacked against those that still survive, so still I tried. No, still I rise until I thrive and struggle isn't me no more. A queen taught me why the cage bird sings. Then a king came and taught me why the birdie doesn't sing no more. Too busy gnawing at the locks to get free. He gnaws until his beak bleeds. He knows one day it won't bleed no more. One day my beak won't bleed no more. One day he'll open all the cages See broken, better faces, crack a smile Cause they no longer have to wonder What it's like to be free no more But you know freedom ain't free no more He breaks free And ain't the type to break free And turn his back on all the other birds that ain't free And so he flies to where the cage birds sing And the next song the cage birds sing says We wanna grow She reminded me of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden Eager to have a taste of that fruit that was so forbidden Her parents sheltered her thus St. Louis City was hidden She became like Pandora, opened the box and lost the ribbon Couldn't relate to her peers, so she remained quiet She saw the kids in caskets, which then triggered the riots Evil flowing from Zeus' gifts, you can hear my city crying Now she's thinking, what if Adam and Eve did it bite it? 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 Small, but I am a vagabond, I am a deity Walk along my city streets, there is no weapon that forms against me Blind, but I can see it I see the atrocities done to my people Following in debt and self-doubt, the ones that can help us just laughing through the people Or maybe it's a kaleidoscope Maybe they see something different, there is no hope Nah, I don't believe it I believe that we can all do better Take my pain and suffering, poke holes from end to end Spill out my blood, pick up a pen, and maybe I'll write a letter And I'ma drop to sincerities No formalities allowed Full volume, hear me clear and loud Because you know me You can't hide from me You've seen my face before I'm the injustice in the winds Yeah, I'm the one right at your door I'm knocking Won't you let it Even if it's scared of the water No matter what We keep our heads above the water We wanna change Even if it's scared of the water No matter what We keep our heads above the water Even if it's scared of the water No matter what We keep our heads Waking up in STL, thinking should I wear a vest? You hear it every day, it's a lot of shooters on the streets in the Midwest. This is the land of the curse, you say. Being verified with a gang to make it out is the only way. I think it's sad. The only news that's on the news is St. Louisans getting shot. Young faces just fade away. I'm tired of hearing it. Let's add positivity. I see everybody making it out of the city, out of this nitty gritty. If everybody contributes to the craft, we gon' make history. But what can I say? It's up to the people, including you, of course. We wanna grow. I'm just trying to stand tall like the Eiffel But what you supposed to do when all your homies suicidal? 
All my life I'm trying to live large just like my idols But if I don't, it's just a game charged of what I might do And all my life my brothers break laws and duck the Bible But cling on, I hope, I hope your destiny finds you Think back when we was kids, let that remind you That you can do anything We wanna grow, we wanna grow So pull the ball to the But I'm going to tell you something that really, really, really touch a person when they in the in the, the low space in life is you sitting down with them and having a conversation with them. And you asking them, how's your day going? Yeah. And you really listen. Mm. Right? This part of recognizing somebody's humanity, showing yeah. some love, you know. I mean, pre-COVID, you know, right now, and I'm not going to even play because I'm... You know, a little immune compromise. Yeah. They ain't even gonna play with nobody. But you know, I I ain't got a problem with with a hug. You know, because mm-hmm. I would hug my people, and and they know me. They, you know, um, people call my phone. Um, Sometimes they just want to talk, and I'm here. I'm gonna be on the other end. Yeah. I might be in the middle of of some paperwork. I'm gonna put that paperwork down. And be like, what's going on, baby? What, what's happening? Right. Yeah. You know, your words can sometimes make the difference between somebody wanting to live or die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can see your character. Well, more than that, you know, just feel that love, that energy coming from you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like, I can't give you, I'm going to throw you an air hug these days. You know right, what most of most of But COVID. yeah, I mean, just let people know that you love and support them. Right. Most of Yeah. 100%. 100% absolutely. Um, the name Pot Bangers, how, 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 how you come with that? I'm the daughter of a pot banger. Heard, heard. My mom, mom do. She banged them revolutionary pots. Like I said, she served the community. You know, I grew up in a tenement. And I would come home from school and you could look up at the windows. We lived on the second floor. And the windows were fogged up, right? Moms was in there and when you walk in the apartment, because when you walked in the building, you smelled the food. I knew yeah. what my mom's <laughs> man listen. <laughs> and then when we go inside the apartment, them pots in there banging and clanging. Yeah. They're banging them pots. My mom's banging them pots. So they say I want to be like her when I grow up. I heard that. I heard mm. that. But that's where pot bangers. You know, we 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 say that we bang revolutionary pots. Because the revolution is love. It and is. love always wins over everything. And your love, if your love ain't coming through your food, you might as well take that food and throw it in the trash. I heard <laughs> yeah. that. You know. I heard that. Put some love in that. Yeah, that, what that, that's said. what they Stop say. Dude. It's like, yeah. it's, it's love and a recipe. Playing. It's mm-hmm. love and a recipe, man. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't taste some mac and cheese that needed a little bit of love. I ain't, Ooh, man. I ain't, gonna, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna say no names to... either, but, you know. I'm man. not gonna lie. Now, now, when I'm doing a cake, I do a recipe. Because I have to be able to balance that cake. Because when I do a cake, it got to taste as good as it looks. Right. So right. I, I sometimes I, I orchestrate my own recipe because, you know, trial and error, you learn over the years, okay. right? But it's very rare that I do a recipe for food. Oh, yeah? Uh, I throw a little boom shakalaka and some ooey up in there, and it's all love. I Yo, them must be the insane. secret ingredients. We saw yeah. you, 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 you wouldn't, you wouldn't let old boy put the camera in the, in the hey. pie until it was stirred up. Yo, hey. I, I, I gotta ask, you know what I'm saying? That's I, them banger beans. That's them oh, banger yeah. beans. That's what we call them, banger beans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. little she, she sweet, a little party. heat. Yeah, gotcha. it's gonna be on the menu for the holiday dinners on the menu. Okay. I, um, so so I gotta ask you because they they we we were watching the video earlier yeah. and they cut the camera right after he uh right after he tried tried the, the green beans. I need to I need to know I need to know what 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 he react like what 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 that was like. Oh, he was like trying to get more, baby. Yeah, I heard he you. Had, I, he, I, I, I figured more. he had to. Man, be. he had he to. Had what cause the look on his face saying? right when he was about to put it. Like, when, the, when the next time you cooking again? Yeah. Oh yeah. no, nah, he was he yeah. was with us for about a week. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was with us for about a week. Um, so he, he done ate at the house. 
ate at our kitchen. He done been yeah. everywhere. Man, he oh, didn't have man. the chance to eat everywhere. Oh, he man. didn't got it right, yeah, right. He, he got the special privilege, man. Right, you know what I'm saying? Man, he yeah. got that privilege, man. Most definitely. Yeah, deaf. he's yeah. a good young man. Uh, we still actually in touch. Beautiful. Oh, that's, Beautiful. Yeah. that's amazing. That is beautiful. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that they. Uh, I'm glad that you were picked. He. Uh, uh, he said. He said that they allow the, the the his following picks who to highlight. So so that yeah. was that was that was beautiful. That was perfect. Yes. That was perfect. Now, I'm not about to ask you to rap. <laughs> I'm not about to ask you to rap, but I need to know what's up. My mama said you be rapping. She said, she, she, she said, she said, flat out, oh yeah, she be rapping. <laughs> she be, she be she rapping. Man. She, oh, and my mama boy. know I make music. So, so you know what I'm I just need to know what's up. What's, what's... Yeah, so, you know, um, once upon a time, you know, little something. Little song? Little sham, sham, sham. Hey, yeah, I heard so, uh, yeah, so, you know, a um, lot of people don't know, but hip hop is my culture. I represent the Universal Zulu Nation. Oh, yeah. like, like yeah. Kev started. He coined the term hip hop. Keith, um, he was one of the Furious Five with Grandmaster Flash. Wow! And a friend of ours, Sequoia, was going in the army, and we was over at the Dixie Club up in the Bronx. And Keith was messing with uh, Sequoia. Said, "Yeah, they're gonna have you marching, talk about hip hop, hip hop." And so that night, him, Melly Mel, the Kid Creole, was only three MCs at the time. Scorpio and Raheem didn't come on board yet. Mm. Um, you know, but he was like, yeah, you going to know me. They're going to have you. you going to be hip hop. And then he started saying hip, hip hop. Yeah, don't stop. You know, was, was, yeah, yeah, don't even give me some. Come on. That was Keith come on, Cowboy. Come on, come on, you come know, on. Um, God bless his soul. But that's where, you know, the term hip hop come from. Mm. Um, yeah, it was. We had some great time, you know. I mean, I didn't. We like dip, die, socialize, trying to make you realize that hey. we are qualified to rectify, to satisfy that burning desire to forget y'all. Forget mm-hmm. y'all. Hey. Hey. You know, you know, so you get happy. Hey. You know, so it was just those, those, yeah. Man, if, and if, some if, magical times back in the day. If you if you if you're a student of the game, or even if you even uh, 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 uh this hip hop game, or even if you uh saw the hip hop evolution, we was me and Integrity, uh, the engineer was just talking about that earlier. But if you if you if you saw hip hop evolution, if you watched that through, then you then you recognize those names that she just said, Grandmaster Flash, all of them, all of them, you recognize them. So that that that's cool. I'm, uh, <sighs> I'm a student of the hip hop game. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't gonna go too deep into all of that. You know what I'm saying? Out there dancing you know on the concrete. Most dev, most dev. On the concrete with a, with a, uh, a piece of cardboard between you and the concrete. That's why I don't have knees no more. Oh yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> out there, I was out there trying to do a little something. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, it was it was crazy. Like 1977 was like the year the blackout in New York. You know. Um, that night, I was trying to sneak off to the nine. Cool Herc was throwing down. Moms was like, don't take your... Mm. So, and you know, I'm like, I'm not. And, you know, we trying oh, to creep man. off. Uh, you, and you, then you, stepped yo, off you, the you, curb. Yo, you, the you, lights you, went out, man. You, 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 was out, you, was out, you was outside of, of, I was of outside. the window I was with, uh, with, with Herc and them? Herc? You, you, oh, man. Butter, yeah, Tag, yeah. We, we, me and, and Tegra, the DJ, we was literally Donald just D. having this conversation yeah. earlier. Herc played on the nine. Which is 169th and West Avenue. Yes, Bambada man. was in Bronx River. Flash was on Boston Road. So I grew up on Boston Road. You oh, yo, these so, some like, big names she dropping you know, right now. No, but like, yeah, that's the family. I mean, you know, my brothers and sisters, I go home and man, once in a while I get home. Wow. Yeah. Well, you, you, done, you done lived so much life. You man. done touched so much. Thank this. God. Thank God. Yo, I'm... <laughs> Yo, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of speechless right now. Give me give me give me a second to get myself together, yo. Some, somebody say something. <laughs> man, all I gotta say is I want to be like that when I grow up, man. I feel real. you. I'm I still feel trying you. to grow up, my man. I'm still hey, trying to hey, grow up. I'm but like you done lived already, man. It's crazy. Most down. You know, still... I've been blessed. It's, I, you know, like I said, the hard times. Yeah. You know, helped me appreciate when things was well. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When when I was out there going through. You know, I still had my babies with me and I knew they loved me and, and they trusted me to make things right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. And like, you know, like I gave you my phone, but you look at my phone, there's a picture of me and my three babies that was on the street with me. 
right? And my daughter's in her uniform. Mm. And, and, you know, this was on her retirement day. And we was all in San Diego with her. Oh, yeah. You know, and so that's like dopeness on the cheap. Most Back best. to the roots. Most you know best. what I'm saying? I 100%. mean, so, yeah, it's always, it's, it's always uh, good to understand that I'm here because I had to go here. But it's a possibility I can go back there again. Right. Mm -hmm. So never uh, lose your sense of humility. Definitely. In life, period. Hey, I mean, I've been I've been blessed to be a lot of places, different places in the world. You know, I've just been blessed. And so now, you know, even though I went through my storm, right, I want to help somebody else through their storm. Mm. Yeah, and I don't That's know beautiful. if I'm gonna go to another one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you, you can. That's the thing. People that are on the streets came from many places. Yeah. And they those do. of us who have should understand that we are all but a situation away. I could be sitting here talking to you and just lose my mind and end up back to square one. What uh you 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 mentioned New York, San Diego. Uh what brought you to St. Louis? Oh, I married the guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my my husband, he dropped, dropped me off. He had to run back to the house. But my husband uh, grew up here in Pine Lawn. Mm. Ooh, Pine Lawn. So yeah. um when he retired, well, we bought the house uh before he retired. Uh, maybe about four years before retirement, we bought the house here in Florissant and, you know, in preparation for that moment where we can live in one place. And so we bought a house here and he wanted to come home. And mm. so Respect. you serve this country, do what you want. Right, right. Respect. Definitely. 100%, 100%. And now right. we ready to go. <laughs> to Florida. <laughs> To Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. it's too cold, man. Man, so, man, so you, you didn't you didn't live on both coast, Midwest. You going down south? Yeah. Uh, uh, what worlds have you lived? Um, actually, yeah. So I born in New York, raised in New York, moved to San Diego, from San Diego up the Great Lakes, which was up above Chicago. Mm -hmm. It was cold and grave digger booty up there, boy. Yeah. <laughs> up there. <laughs> Listen. Listen. <laughs> but you know, Man. I survived it because the people and the Man. people up there is everything, right? I love my people up there. And then we went to Norfolk, Virginia. And that was it wasn't as bad with the weather. It was pretty warm some most of the year. But I just didn't I just didn't get down with it like that. No. And then we went back to cold Great Lakes, back to warm San Diego, <laughs> and then came here. Man, St. Louis was weather unpredictable, though, so you know, right, you know right. what you're going to get. You feel like Listen. all four seasons in one week. Yeah, Listen. one week, man. A couple of days ago, one I was in shirt real. sleeves outside cleaning my garage. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, wow. I'm saying, I'm saying it switch up quick, don't it? Yeah. Switch yes. up real quick. Man. And then like most of my stuff is already packed. Mm. So I was expecting to be out of here before winter. Oh really? Oh my oh, goodness. So I you man, know, I'm, I'm glad man. we I'm glad we caught you. Yeah, I was expecting to be gone. But I'll I'll be back. Oh, okay. Oh, You'll we gonna do we gonna do the thing next month, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cook up a storm. And, and our unhoused family, once a year, we we do uh, the Neighbors United Holiday Dinner, where our unhoused and our house family come together, food, fun, family, and fellowship, right? Got a Man. DJ, we got live music. Uh, we give away, uh, we have what we call a free store, where people just, and we, we get brand new stuff, and people can come and shop, and, if, you know, they get new shoes, everything up. Right, check up from the neck up Beautiful. too. Like everything going down. Beautiful. So Beautiful. yeah, I'm I'm oh, I'm getting ready for that. I'm a, I'm a head south in time for Thanksgiving. Gotcha. Come yeah. back and do this. Hopefully by then my house will be sold and I'll be gone. I lived downtown St. Louis growing up. Um, I grew up like uh by the uh Peabody's and not the Peabody's the uh the Cochrane Apartments. 
And so I experienced like, you know, all the homeless people down there. My mom used to help like yours, not to the extent, but close enough. And um, I also experienced it going to the Fluence Preparatory, um, you know, being right across the street from the Larry Rice. Yeah. And so I give out like um, trail mix and water bottles, but like I still feel like I could do more. So um, being in Story Stitchers, what can we do to, um, like you were saying earlier, to hold those people in higher positions than us accountable? What can we do? Well, there's several um, wonderful organizations out doing work. Um, I think that sometimes, you know, you reach out. Even, I mean, I invite you all to come to my kitchen on a Thursday, you know, um, and then on other days where we're doing different uh, events. Um, we have a house in Pine Lawn that has been uh, renovated. So we get ready to open a transitional house uh, for women. Um, and then we have, you know, when the weather's right, you know, we do have a garden and everything. So like it's helps that things that help, like with these women when they come into the house, they're gonna need somebody like to help them out with things. Sometimes people be in the streets so long, they don't know how to live inside. You know what I'm saying? Um, come in my kitchen and you don't even have to know how to hold an onion, child. Listen, by the time you leave out, you're gonna be an expert. <laughs> But, and you get to eat. And then, you know, um, we call it the caravan of love, where crew will go out on the street and serve the family out there or help them, you know, get to a shelter. Um, winter's here. Ferguson Warming Center is open. Um, anybody that is 18, Josh has been looking for people to come and help out at the shelter. You know, um, we got games. I, I brought a lot of board games out. Sit down and play a board game or just talk to somebody. You know? Um, I don't want to just give you a blanket on the street and keep moving. I want to get you off the street. I've been working on that. And thank God I've been successful in, in a lot of situations. But, yeah, you talk to people. Find out what it is they need. They may need to go into a treatment facility. They may need uh, mental health um, help. Um, there's a lot of things. They may be that veteran who served and don't know how to get their VA benefits. You know, um, it's a lot of things. Domestic violence is huge because people don't want to talk about it. And we got to understand that women are not the only ones who are victims of domestic violence. Let me not say victim, I'm going to say survivors. Right? But you don't have to be a woman to be abused. Men are abused as well. And so talk to people and find out what it is, what they got going on. You know, a lot of people say, oh, they don't want to go nowhere. Sometimes people don't know they're supposed to get off the street because their mental illness is that severe. Or that, that that drug addiction got them to where, you know, they just looking and looking and looking. Some people got family. And some of their family don't know how to find them. We've paid for people to go back to their home, to their family. So in many situations, I think that... Um, if we take time to find out how we can be a help. Because homelessness is not one size fits all. Um, Not that it's my decision, but I would uh, definitely love if we can figure out how Story Stitches could maybe uh, volunteer at the kitchen or something like that. That's not, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not my, so Let now, me know when y'all want to come through and, you got know, you. Uh, yeah, it, whether I'm here or not, love cool rock We would definitely love to work something like that out. Um... For uh, our listeners span from 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 all different type of walks of life. We got we got wealthy people listening. We got people that are uh, poverty stricken listening. Uh, we we got people that have never had to worry about being homeless or missing a meal a day in their lives. Uh, for people that um, people that may not understand uh, right now, right now is uh, is pretty it's pretty possible that you have their ear. 
right now. So, so, so what would you, if, if you could sum up in a few words, what would you want them to understand about uh, homeless people? I would always say, before you try to understand anything, understand that these are human beings. See their humanity. Understand that everybody is not going to accept to you in the same way. People got different things going on. We have whole families that's pulled out of cars in the winter. I'm talking about mom, dad, and the children that's all living in the car. Never look down on nobody because you don't know their situation. Like I said, me and my babies, we was in the car, we was in people's houses, we was in the hotel, we was wherever we could sleep at. And still, I went to work every day to take care of my kids. Stop judging. Start loving. That's what I would say to people. I got a question, Mama Cat. Thank you for all the work you're doing in the community and everything you're doing to help the unhoused. I'm sure it get weary sometimes for you. What do you do to keep yourself going? How do you get that daily motivation to continue to be a blessing and a benefit to those who are often overlooked? <laughs> I'm able to wake up and get up out of my bed in my house where I have everything that I need. That's enough to push me up out of there. Um, the idea of temperatures dropping and people don't even have socks on their feet. They don't have a coat. They don't have anything warm. People in the t-shirt. People like Mr. Grover Perry that died in the porta potty. Another unnamed person died in the dumpster. Mm. People dying in vehicles because it's cold. They don't have gas to warm the vehicle up. Um, that's a, that should be enough to motivate anybody. Babies. Babies with nowhere to go. We must be our brothers and sisters keeper. I know what it is. And I know very well like I said, I could be sitting here, lose my mind, and end up back in square one. That's enough. I get up, and sometimes I don't even work, wait to go over to my kitchen. It, whatever I got in there, I, I, look, I got some dried cranberries and some oranges in my refrigerator. I'm going to make a hot cider. And we going to the Man. street. That's that. That's that. That's that resourcefulness. Whatever yeah, I mean, you got on deck is what you got. What so. you got, you Most know bad. what I'm saying? I mean, it's only me and the hubs at the crib. It's, it's just us. Like, it's nothing. Even if I gotta go around the corner to the store, but you know, it's a good idea to sometimes keep stuff in your car. Yeah, that's who. Um, we call it Operation Pack a Snack, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, put a little peanut butter and jelly sandwich in there. A little, little, little Capri Sun and some water and some fruit, fruit cup and, you know, um, cookies, chips, whatever. And you see somebody out there, give it to them. But I'd much rather be able to give you a hot cup of soup, right, on a cold winter night. But I'd much rather get you off the street. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm a... My motivation to move forward, the love and support of my unhoused and underserved families in St. Louis is knowing how blessed I really am. Mm. On your, um, on your, uh, you said you cook every Thursday. Um, where? Where can people go? Oh, okay. So we're at 6501 Wide Down Boulevard. Um, you can send an email to potbangers at gmail.com. Precious, uh, she's our volunteer coordinator. She'll get back with you, um, and then she'll reach out to me and say, hey, how many volunteers you need, you know? Um, or you could just, you know, y'all right here with me. You let me know. I want to come on this day, and we make it happen. Beautiful. Easy peasy. Wow. I, I got to say, this, this is this is the only, I don't, I don't know about y'all, this is, we, we've done, uh, 
it's not our first podcast, but I ain't never felt like this before. I don't, I don't know. Is it is it just me? Man, I it's not just you, bro. I'm saying we sitting up here with greatness, bro. This is yeah, like, man. Yo, it's, it's just wild. y'all great. The energy is just heavy right now. Man, I feel it. You know, I feel it. Mm. Wow. Um. Ooh, y'all just working yeah. my head, dude, honey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I felt the there. vibe as soon as she walked in, bro. Word. I felt the vibe as soon as she walked in, so, you know. Uh, it's, it's only, you know, because of you all young folks. Like, when we say y'all our future, our future is now. It is. And y'all out here doing things to make a difference. So I got to give y'all y'all roses. Feel me? Thank you. Thank Keep you. doing what y'all doing. Wow, that means a lot. And I ain't got no questions. I just want to give up to you, you know. Respect, for real. That's, you know, that's a positive Definitely. thing that you're doing. And, you know, a lot of people wouldn't do what you did, especially coming where you're coming from, the situation that you were put in. But you did what you had to do, and now you're trying to get back to your community, and uh, I feel that, so respect. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, 100%, as if serving your country wasn't enough. Man, so I worked for them. Got you, man. Got my you. husband and kids and grandkids is the one who put the uniform on. Understood. So you know, yesterday was Veterans Day. Shout out to them. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Shout out to and, and but other I, veterans. But I was able listening. to give my son and daughter their orders when they left boot camp because yeah. I worked at the boot camp. <laughs> I heard so that. I was, yeah, yeah, I was there to do I that. Heard that. You know. So. Yes, ma'am. And thank, thank you, uh, anyone else out there listening that served this country. Or, or that's doing great works, like Mama Cat is, if, if, if any in any facet of life, whether it's trying to house people and feed them, or uh, 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 whether you're uh, raising mental health awareness or uh, breast cancer, whatever advocacy you you you're engaging in, we need you and we appreciate you. So, um, thank you for that. Uh, with that well, being said, I honestly, I, I I wish we could keep you here forever. I know we gotta man. let you go. <laughs> I know we got to let you, I don't want to let go of that energy, you know what I'm saying? No, but yeah. I know we got to hey, let you bro, go. Hey, bro, the energy's still going to be in the room even when it's over, so. Man, um, uh, just thank you so much. Thank yes, you for sir. everything that you're doing. I thank you for for uh, inviting me to come today. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Um, y'all y'all some dope youngins now. Thank, <laughs> you. thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. You know, I'll, be, I'll be watching, you know, I'll be... Catching y'all on your Facebook stuff and yeah. whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I I appreciate how y'all getting down and you know yes, ma'am. keep doing what y'all doing. Absolutely, he like Absolutely. cream rise to the top. Absolutely, yeah. you know absolutely, one hundred percent. So, ladies and gentlemen, everybody under the sound of my voice, I want to thank you for tuning in to get another episode of Stitchcast. This has definitely been a special one. Uh, thank you, Mama Cat, for coming in, Doctor. Everything, just, just pot banger, just everything. Thank you so much for spending time with us, having a conversation with us. Uh, we hope that you enjoy this episode. Uh, we hope that you continue to tune in as we continue to talk about groups of people that we believe are misunderstood and, and that those misunderstandings should be cleared out. That being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. And last but not least, we want to give a very special shout out to the Stitchcast Studio sponsors. Stitchcast Studio Season 2 in 2021 is sponsored by the Spirit of St. Louis Women's Fund three-year grant from 2020 to 2022. Arts and Education Council, PNC Grant, and Lush Corporations, the Charity Pot. Peace in the Prairie is presented with support from Missouri Arts Council, a state agency which receives support from the state of Missouri and the National Endowment for Arts. Additional support is provided by the Spirit of St. Louis Women's Fund, Missouri Foundation for Health, City of St. Louis Youth at Risk Crime Prevention Grant of 2020, Stewart Family Foundation, and Kranzberg Arts Foundation. They say who that, but you already knew that. That beat them story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches.